Hey hey, what is up guys, it is Orbin Hardware with a brand new video. Today I want to show you guys my $598 mini gaming PC that anyone can build in 2021. Now a cool thing about this computer is that you can game on it without the need of a dedicated graphics card. Now the PC has an onboard GPU that is uh, powerful enough to run most current popular games in both full HD and at 720p at low settings and yeah, eventually when the GPUs do come back in stock you can easily pop in an RTX 3060 or let's say a Radeon RX 6700 and enjoy 14 for p gaming with high level of graphics details now in this video guys i'm going to show you the exact step-by-step -step method how i'm putting this pc build together showing you guys all the parts i'm using before booting the system up testing out the gaming performance in some of the most popular games and if you follow my steps throughout this video you should be able to see this frame count with this pc I will be detailing most of these games in the benchmark section that we're gonna look at after we completed the PC build. Now you can easily find all components linked up in the video description below. Now before we get into the video, hey my name is Robin and on this channel we benchmark and we build gaming PCs using both the latest and used PC parts to help you decide what PC parts to pick for your next gaming PC. And so if you're interested in that, smash the like button down below and hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Alright, so let's go ahead and build this PC. Now for today's budget mini PC, for the motherboard I am picking the Gaming Plus AC from MSI, coming in at $129. Now based on the B450 chipset, the Gaming Plus AC is an affordable mini ITX motherboard that's got everything you could ask for without breaking the bank. Now this includes dual channel DIMM slot support, an M.2 slot on the back, we find an HDMI output plus display output as well and plenty of USB ports. We also find Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and support for Ryzen 5000 through a BIOS update. So we're going to pair the B450 with this all-in-one processor. This is the Ryzen 3 3200G coming in at $175. Now this is a 4 core 4 thread APU with onboard Vega graphics. Now the built in Radeon graphics will act as the graphic chip for this gaming PC. Now another cool thing about this APU is that it's overclockable and we're going to look into this a bit later in the video. Anyway it's got a 3.6 GHz base clock and a boost clock of 4 GHz. Let's take a quick look at the gaming performance with the 3200G. Here we can see that the $170 processor does fairly well, but keep in mind guys, this is just a 4 core CPU, so there's going to be limitations to that, but overall, the price to performance ratio for the 3200G is fantastic, and it is a great pick for today's budget PC build. We're going to use the included cooler that comes with our APU, and since the heatsink is using springs, we first gonna have to get rid of the retention frame. Now the CPU can only fit one way and there isn't a clever way to tell which way it should be installed. You want to look for a golden triangle. One can be found on the processor and another one can be found on the socket. We want these two to match up. So open up the latch, turn the CPU so these uh, triangles lines up then simply drop the CPU into the socket, move the metal arm all the way down and our CPU or <laughs> APU is installed. Now let's go ahead and install the included stock cooler that comes with the APU. For optimal clearance I recommend turning the fan 45 degrees. The thermal paste is already pre-applied, so all you need to do is to line up the cooler with the AMD logo now pointing towards the upside. 
Line the cooler up with these screw holes and take your screwdriver and secure the screws in a pattern like so. Also guys don't forget to connect the CPU fan cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. To light up the system a slight bit I am picking the highly popular 16GB Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB. These two have a speed of 3200MHz and that is what I recommend. Now that being said guys, if you do want to get away a bit cheaper, I am also linking up a cheaper kit down below as well. So open up the latches and they can only go in one way and that's it. Now there's only one tiny thing left and that is storage. NVMe or M.2 storage devices have fallen in price quite significantly over the years. Nowadays you can pick up a super speedy stick just like this one from Kingston with 480GB of space for just $60. And this one is about 27 times faster than a traditional hard drive. And so as you can imagine this will literally melt your face pretty much at least. Anyway, you find the M.2 slot on the opposite side of the CPU, so flip the board around. Then insert the device with a 45 degree angle, with the notch lining up just like so. Gently secure the M.2 device using the included screw just like so. And you find the screw inside the motherboard box in a small plastic bag. Now we can finally go ahead and move the assembly, the motherboard assembly if you like and install it in our case and in this build we're gonna go with the Evolve ITX coming in at $84. Now Fantex is one of few case manufacturers that never disappoints when it comes to quality of the PC case. They always deliver top of the line quality and features and this is their mini ITX variant of their popular Evolve lineup. Now we find a 140 fan at the rear and space to fit several additional fans at the top as well as the front. It has support for dual slot GPUs and so please guys do have this in mind as many graphics cards these days are quite thick and bulky. In order to get into the interior we need to undo these four thumb screws to remove the tamper glass side window and before we can install the motherboard we first need to go ahead and install the IO shield. Now this thing is located inside the motherboard box and it goes in from the back of the case with these circular audio ports located at the bottom. Now before we move our motherboard assembly into place, because of the limited space, yeah I think it's a great idea to install the power supply and route the cables before we do anything else. And for this build I am picking the CV 550 watt unit from Corsair. Now this PCU has an 80 plus bronze certification and it's got enough power if you decide to throw in an RTX 3060 down the road once GPUs yeah do come back in stock. The cables are all black and nicely braided and this will look great through the tempered glass window. Simply slide the PSU into place with the fan facing downwards and secure it using the four included screws. Alright so moving on to wiring. First up we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard. On this one we route through this hole right here just like so. Next cable is the 8 pin and this one we route all the way through this hole right here. And now we can slide the motherboard assembly into place. Before we secure the board though guys, connect both cables. Now we secure the motherboard using the screws that comes provided by Fantex and with the board installed, now is a good time to connect the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB as well as the power button. Let's start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located on the right side of the motherboard. Moving on to front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly we have the front panel connector and you find this connector right next to the front audio. 
And yeah, that is pretty much it guys. What is left to do is just to flip the case around, whack on the side panel, and we have officially completed our 598 US dollar budget gaming PC. Mini gaming PC, maybe I should add. Anyway, let's fire up some games and let's look at what the PC performs like. So on your screen now guys, we're all looking at the performance numbers that I gathered from today's build and I ended up running 16 games in both 1080p and 720p resolution with graphics detail set to low and as you can see, we can expect to see 60 FPS on average. But with that said, let's have a more in-depth look at some of the games tested. And first up we do have Call of Duty Warzone, here I'm selling for 1080p with everything set to low and resolution scaling set to 66% and without doing any overclocking you can expect almost 50 FPS on average but yeah by downloading Ryzen Master from AMD's website and using these safe overclocking settings yeah, I was able to squeeze out another 8 to 10 FPS out of the 3200G and this is totally for free, which is just insane. Anyway, remember guys, you don't have to do any overclocking on the system, but it is extra performance on the table for free if you want to. Next up we have Minecraft, and as you can see guys, I am settling for fancy uh, with these additional settings, and starting with 720p, this results in almost 200 FPS on average, whereas in 1080p at the same graphic settings, it gives us a frame rate of over 100 FPS. CSGO is next up and for this title I am going for 1080p with competitive settings and this has given us an average FPS of over 130 FPS. Moving on to 720p and you're going to see frame rates above 200 FPS on average. Far Cry New Dawn however falls a bit behind as we can see. Division 2 is up next and here we are seeing much healthier numbers, almost 50 FPS in 1080p and if you're willing to do a bit of overclocking, you can expect almost 60 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we saw almost 60 FPS in 720p and about 35 FPS in 1080 and so we're looking at almost 50% reduction going from 1080p to 720p. This is a bit of a disappointment for sure. Grand Theft Auto 5, however, runs great on the 3200G with over 70 FPS at 1080p and almost 100 FPS at 720p, which is just fantastic results. World War Z is another game that also runs fantastic with almost 60 FPS and 1080p. Fortnite also runs great and as we can see, I'm going with a mix between low and competitive settings here, so viewing distance is set to 4 and 3D models is set to 80-ish percent and this results in about 60 FPS on average in 1080p. However, if you do decide to drop the settings to the lowest, you're gonna see numbers close to 100 FPS at 1080p and 150 FPS in 720p. Apex runs great in 720p, but at 1080p, yeah, you might wanna do some overclocking. And again, all PC components can be found in the video description below. Also, shameless plug, we now have an official Discord server up and running and if you want to become a part of the community, ask questions either to me or any of the awesome people on the channel, you definitely want to go ahead and join the Discord server today. Link to the Discord can be found down below. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.